Hello, everybody. Welcome to the another episode of the Poultry Nutrition Black Belt. I'm your host, Pratima Anakari. Um, as we had one introduction episode earlier with Dr. Kelly Wormsley, I'm sure by now some of you or most of you people have known me. So this is my first episode and I am very excited as a host. Today, we have a new guest in our program and her name is Victoria Anthony. She's a postdoctoral research associate working in poultry nutrition and immunology at Department of Animal Science at our state university. So let's hear more about um, Victoria today. So we'll be very informal and we'll try to make fun at the same time. So Victoria, please introduce yourself to us. Okay, thank you Pratima. Hello everybody, I'm glad being the guest for today's show. My name is Victoria Anthony Nyanga. Um, I'll describe myself as an early career researcher and currently I'm working as a postdoctoral research associate at Iowa State University. So a brief about myself, I think um, I actually did my undergraduate in animal science. My home country is Nigeria. So I did my undergraduate back in Nigeria and I also continued with my master's in animal physiology back in Nigeria. But for my uh, PhD, I decided to study abroad and that's how when I ventured into research in poultry, nutrition, and physiology. And I did that at China. And um, after completing that at China, I'm now here in the US for my postdoc. So that's been like my journey so far. <laughs> and we're still moving on. Thank you. That is awesome, Victoria, because um, so about myself, um, I'm not sure how much you know about me, but I kind of talked this to you in earlier episode, if not, uh, maybe or maybe not. So let me tell me a little bit about myself. So I'm from Nepal as well. So I know how traveling and looking different places it means a lot. Also, at the same time, you know, so many different things. I know sometimes you cannot take that much too. It's just, but then it's so much good experience in the life. So I can kind of relate myself with you. So it's really cool to have these experience and have, again, you know, our quest for learning is always increasing and you're never done, right? And there's exactly. an opportunity. We just keep and learning. That's exactly. So um, it is so cool about you. I'm very excited of this, uh, what you have shared. Um, yeah, so you mentioned about, so you were in China before and then uh, you, you are in uh, Iowa State now. So what particular program brought you in in Iowa State, into Iowa State? Okay, thanks for the question. Uh, basically, my study in China was still on poultry nutrition. Okay, so I, I was still working on poultry nutrition. And then here in Iowa, I'm still working on poultry nutrition as well. But uh, the interesting aspect that has been added to it now is the immunology. So I get to focus more on the nutrition and immune system together. I think that's one of the things actually, because not just on looking at one aspect, I was trying to see how to um, design nutrition and Im immunomechanistic studies alongside each other. And then uh, I got to meet my current AI, which I'm working with. And so far, it's been like an interesting discourse. So basically, the immune system or the research on the immune aspect, yeah, that's what brought me that down. That is great. That is great because um, so I am, um, again, I'm, another excitement here is uh, so glad to have another nutritionist because uh, and you say nutrition, we have a common platform already. That is awesome. And then when you say uh, adding immunology, that's even very unique because I, in my knowledge, although there are maybe few or maybe many, but not that a lot. So you can always have that idea of nutrition basics. Then you have add on your design, your immunology, because you have to collect those samples throughout and can see where you put in those replications and everything. And Dr. Bobek lab is great on those. So I think you are definitely in a very nice lab. So I have heard and we have read a lot of papers out of our lab coming. So it's really a good thing. So um, yeah, that is awesome. So about the immunology, so let's, I'm kind of, I'm not going to ask you any detailed questions about immunology, but you know, what is excitement in immunology for you? And what is specific? Okay, I think the 
actual aspect that I really love is having to look at all those immune cell populations. Recently, I've been trying to gain more proficiency with the flow cytometry, which is what we use, um, which is what we use to for most of our analysis here in the lab. So I've been working on a lot of the studies on that. And just having to identify, quantify like the different types of immune cell populations or having to um, induce a kind of stress response using um, and um, maybe something like LPS or just a kind of a disorder to the immune system and then observing those responses across like from the performance to the other physiological parameters in the poultry model. So this kind of thing just gives us like a broad uh, knowledge and understanding of what actually goes on, even at the cellular level. So those are just, uh, there's still so much other things that I'm still trying to explore. But for now, I would actually say the immune cell population, looking at those things as minute as they are, and then trying to understand them better, that gives me joy. Yes, Victoria, that is wonderful. Um, so I also, I was looking into your biography and I also looked to do something about one uh, compound, which is L-citrulline oh, okay. poetry. Yeah. <laughs> so would you like to share a very exciting thing about any finding or what you, even in the, if you're still working on those things, what about it in poetry? Thanks for the question. So for the last, um, couple of years I've been working on L-citrulline and uh, just a brief citrulline is a non-essential amino acid okay and it's it's largely known um, for human studies because they use it in pharmaconutrition and for therapeutic purposes but uh, coming to like the animal nutrition aspect we don't really know much about this I think one of the first reports on the citrulline in poetry was recorded maybe back in the 1940s. So, but from there, there has been like a wide research gap with regards to it. And uh, when I came upon that, I was like, this would be interesting because aside from being a non-essential amino acid, it has so many beneficial rules. And one of it is arginine recycling. In poultry, um, arginine is a fifth, the fifth limiting amino acid. So now the role of citrulline is that it serves as a precursor for arginine. And there are certain conditions where you cannot just deliver arginine directly. So citrulline can be a good source of arginine in such a case. So this brought up like a kind of, um, you know, uh, you, you, you're you trying to look at one thing and then it opens up another, just opens up another. So it kind of gave us like a series of studies. Oh, exactly. I absolutely. I mean, that's what research is about, isn't it? So Make we kind sense. of focus uh, from uh, point A uh, to go to point B, but we, there are maybe kind of in just between that. Yeah. Uh -huh. okay. And it was just opening yeah. up and opening up like, wow, this is like you've hit a gold mine. So that, that's, that's how we started off with L-citrulline in poultry research. That's wonderful because, uh, you know, um, you know, we have been hearing a lot these days, not only that uh, fourth, fifth or sixth limiting amino acids we're talking about in poultry, um, there are non-essential amino acids also might have some role, right? Even though it has been defined as non-essential, um, there is a combination, there's always a relationship, right? That's the, the fate of these amino acids and they turn one into each other. So um, that is awesome because our field needs a lot of advancement. Uh, although we are advanced, maybe we have done a great things in research, but always new things like this excites a researcher and the society. So it's a very wonderful contribution. And I'm looking forward to your publications on all the scholarly articles on that, Citrulline. <laughs> we, we do have some of that already. Um, I think some of the parts we've explored, we've explored uh, the influence on like uh, heat stress. We found that it's very good in terms of uh, heat stress mitigation. And it also has like a thermoregulatory potential. And I think another aspect we saw, you know, oxidative stress and heat stress are kind of like come hand in hand. So it's also, it's also a potent antioxidant, being that it can scavenge the free radicals. And we also saw a positive effect on the growth performance, the production performance in terms of body weight and feed intake as well. That's for, for the broiler chickens. We use the broiler chickens for part of the studies. 
Although initially we also used the laying hands for the study. And I, um, I think still going on, then we also explored the potentials on arginine and nitric oxide recycling. So there are like a couple of works on that and the publications are also there. And we're still working on it as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think I saw um, some of your research interest in under uh, functional uh, amino acids and uh, um, the heat his stress management. So maybe that kind of tells what you just explained. Um, and heat stress, you know, as uh, species wise, um, broilers are very susceptible to heat stress. And I mean, laying hands too, but you see a little bit of. Um, uh, can, maybe not, I'm not saying slow, they will be affected. I mean, the place like Mississippi, we have a heat distress for layers. I mean, it's not a good place to raise the layers. It's just, you know, it's very hot <laughs> in our resource barn. Um, so as I work with layers, I just have to mention, we just see a random uh, fluctuation in egg production in cage house, like when you have a research study, in the, especially those peak summer, like July, August. Exactly, that's about uh, to happen. You can't control those things. Um, but yeah, no, that is really cool. Um, I think it's a kind of new avenue to kind of know these amino acids and also non-essential amino acids you're working with. Um, so also, um, you know, I mean, I would, I mean, we're going to just keep it short. Um, very exciting. But kind of tell me about some phytogenic substances are that work you kind of work with. What 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 are some of these um Product, or not products, like compounds that you work with um, in your other side of the research um, avenue. Thanks for that. Um, coming to the phytogenic substances, that's like, um, I recently did like a bibliometric uh, review on heat stress in poultry. And I discovered that there has been an increasing uh, number of studies that are actually looking into this kind of substances, just mainly as a form of nutritional um way to mitigate heat stress. So I haven't actually started like any work on phytogenic substances, but it's an interest that I desire to explore. Most of my work has been on functional amino acids. And that's where we bring in like the L-citrulline, regardless not being like an essential amino acid, but one that has profound um, metabolic uses as well as biological benefits to, in poultry as well as in humans. But for, for the phytogenic substances, that's an area that I am really interested in exploring, and I'm currently open to collaborations on that as well. Thank you. Thanks for sharing. And maybe some of these audience that are listening to your podcast right now, <laughs> maybe they'll reach out to you or your lab. Hey, we have these exciting things coming up. Would you like okay. to do some research on that, right? I'm that's very how open we, to that. Yeah, that's how yeah. we make connections and roll on in this research. Ready for more sustainable poultry production? New data suggests that decreasing bacterial loads in feed using Termin 8 supports entric health, leading to improved performance. Gut health is more than a gut instinct. Learn more today at www.anatox.com. Well, thank you so much for giving us a very brief but very sweet um, background in your work and um, telling the audience uh, what who you are and what you do and what your lab does. Thank you so much, Victoria, for coming into the show. And uh, I'm really looking forward to meet you in person um, in one of the scientific uh, meetings and socials. Um, and if there's any last thing that you want to tell to my, our audience. Okay. So um, thank you, Pratima. I think I've also had a wonderful time getting to share this because I laugh with you. And to our audience, research on um, poultry nutrition, poultry uh, physiology, it keeps evolving, it keeps growing. And uh, we just have to do our best in time and in season to just make the best of it. So thank you very much. You're very welcome. And thank you. And thank you for all the listeners today or maybe viewers if you are doing video. Um, thank you for this opportunity once again to be your host. And now, again, I'm repeating. It's my first show with um, where I'm taking the interview. So thank you, Victoria. You're my special guest. Um, and it, you will remain forever. Um, so thank you all for listening to our program, um, the Poultry Nutrition Black Belt Show. We'll coming in again next week with a new episode. 
Thank you. Bye, all. Hey, everyone. We're always searching for the latest and greatest research to share each week. And if you have a poultry nutrition related research trial and would like to come on the show and talk about it and share it with us, feel free to email the research link, uh, the paper where we can find it, or the abstract to hello at wisenetics.com. That's hello at wisenetics.com. And I look forward to hearing from you.